What's up, YouTubers? So today I have a pretty simple video. We're gonna tackle going back into welding 3 8 plate with a wire welder. So in a previous video, I welded 3 8 plate and kind of had, I would say, unacceptable results. Not good results, that's for sure. So we're gonna weld a bead on the back side of this that I haven't welded on this side with flux core wire and we're gonna cut it in half and do a cut and etch on it. We're also gonna do quarter inch plate. I'm gonna clean the scale off of this, get it cleaned up. And we're gonna do one pass with flux core on one side and one pass with short arc MIG on the other. Cut and etch it and look at it and talk about it. So let's get into it. All right, I got the welder fired up, clean the plates up. This time I kinda ground this as flat as I could get it. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. But I'll tack this up, fully weld it, and then I'll switch over to flux core and we'll do a pass on the other side and a pass on that. All right, I got the wire swapped over. Word of advice. <laughs> Make sure that you switch polarities when you go to uh, flux core wire. Anytime I switch processes, I always, always do a test weld or something, and I knew something was wrong, and I'm like, oh, that's why, wrong polarity. So now that I'm on the right polarity and I ran a little bead and it seems to be all right, I'm gonna run a flux core pass on this, then on this, and we'll cut them and etch them and talk about what we found. Oh, too much settings. Fail. Let me drop the settings a little bit. All right, so generator kicked out because I didn't have enough power. Story of my life here. That's all right, so I reduce the settings. We're gonna run about 325 and 19 and a half. That's gonna put us in a ballpark somewhere around 170 amps which is a little bit on the small side, I guess, the low side for this quarter inch plate, but it should work and we should definitely see a difference between this and the MIG weld on the other side. So let's weld it. All right, there we go. Let's set up and weld this. I'll give time for that to cool off a little bit. I'll clean it, cut it, and etch it, and we'll come back. So, got them cut and etched. I did a second test on 3 8 plate because I had some interesting results on this, and I just wanted to do a test and kind of just look at it. So, we have an additional bonus just for you guys, 3 8 plate test. So, let's start out with the quarter inch and look at it. So this is 6.5 millimeter rough plate, so quarter inch. The weld on the left was short arc MIG. The weld on the right is flux core. Now, obviously the flux core has way better penetration on this thicker plate. The short arc MIG weld, you can see that intersection line where the top plate meets the bottom flat plate. And basically there's no root fusion whatsoever at that point, which coincides with my previous video on this. From a strength perspective, there's no question that the flux core wire weld is stronger. The question is, does it matter? I would say yes, depending on what you're welding, what you're making, you probably need the strength of the root fusion on quarter inch plate, especially if you're doing single pass. Now there is porosity at that top right of that flux core weld, and that's typical. When I've done cut and etches on flux core wire, that is very common. Now this weld, I didn't shoot the face of it, but there was a couple very small pieces of porosity that you could see from the surface of the weld. Again, very typical of flux core. Now had I been able to run higher wire feed speed, like I really should have to be welding this, I think that would have solved it somewhat, but it's hard to say because like I said, I can't run it. My actual amperage, I metered it, was around 182 amps. So I was up there on output, but you know, I just still, I couldn't get enough wire feed to really make this work better. 
And other than a couple little bits of porosity, little pin dots, the weld itself has the penetration, so that's good. Well, let's move on and look at the 3 8 plate comparison. So here we have thicker plate than the previous. A short arc MIG is on the left, flux core is on the right. Now, right away we see something a little bit different than the previous test, and that is the flux core wire on the right has less root fusion. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. One, I kind of was an idiot, and I was doing a very small circle E movement on the flux core wire weld. I thought it might help it because flux core tends to bite in the root no matter what. So guess what? It, uh, it bit into the sides, however, the root is not looking that good. And it's kind of odd that it melted the upright plate. You can see that back past the root, but it didn't fuse that into the bottom plate. Now the settings that I was running for this flux core wire were a little bit on the low side, which is why I did a third test where I bumped up the wire feed from like, I think it was at 310, 19, somewhere in that. I went it to 330 and 20, and my generator was able to hold that without a problem, and then I reran this test with just flux core on both sides. Even though the penetration wasn't the best, it actually is still better than the short circuit MIG on the left, which is really bad when you look at it. There's no root fusion at all. Pretty weak weld, but not ideal. The other thing you can notice is the sheer amount of weld metal that was put down for that flux core weld. You can see how much bigger it is in that single pass MIG. I just was trying to deposit too much metal moving too slow and welding on top of basically weld rather than letting the wire eat away at the, the root. So let's move on. So here we have 3 8 plate once again, and I ran two passes flux core for both of them. Now both of these with slightly higher voltage, about one volt higher and about 30, 20 or 30 feet per minute of wire feed speed higher, you can see much better results. Rather than trying to do a circle E, I just went straight in and just let that wire chew away at the root and you can see massive difference. The one on the right, I ran, I would say, just fast enough to where I knew that the wire was hitting the root and I didn't let it fill at all. The one on the left, you can see how it has a little bit more weld metal sticking out and a little less penetration. That one, I kind of lingered a little bit longer, so I guess my travel speed was a little bit slower, but both of these actually penetrated past the root, especially that right one. I really like the way that right one looks. Now keep in mind, this is what you would expect on 3 8 plate with a 160 to 180 amp MIG welder. If you have more power than that, you could probably see a little bit better penetration with flux core. If you have less power than that, like 140 amp, good luck. You know, it's just not going to get to this point with 140 amps on 3 8 On quarter inch you could, but not on 3 8 The other interesting thing is there was also uh, little pin dots of porosity, about two of them, on both of these weld beads on the surface. I don't see too much evidence internally. What you see there is really just dust and crap on there. But where this was cut was clean, but... Again, you know, the porosity, you can generally get rid of it. It just takes fine-tuning your settings and your travel speed. So, you know, if you're not dialed in 100%, you can expect a couple pin dots. It's just the nature of flux core wire. That's why when you go to gas shielded and not gasless, that pretty much takes care of all the porosity issues, generally speaking. All right, well, let's go to conclusion. Well, pretty interesting results. I would say, I guess in some respects, it's what I expected. These plates where I kind of did a circle movement, which I probably shouldn't have done. And well, guess what? <laughs> I lost penetration because of it and then gained it back by just going straight in with slightly hotter settings ever so slightly. But it goes to show that minute differences can make a huge difference in the weld performance. And for us home hobbyists where we're not using like dual shield or spray arc MIG, 
it, we're, our results are going to be limited. Like when we're getting welding 3 8 plate getting up there in thickness, you have to do things right or you can produce weak welds. Now, would some of these welds like on this 3 8 plate that had minimum root penetration, would it have failed? Well, probably not. I mean, it depends on what this is for. You know, like I always have that disclaimer in my video and I hate to be like obnoxious with it, but you know, it really comes down to what you're using, what you're welding for. And our goal as is, is home hobbyists should be to produce the strongest welds possible. And that's why I always tell people you should have some root penetration on what you're welding and you should cut and etch to verify that your machine and your skills and how you're welding can get that because if you're not getting it, you're at a disadvantage, especially depending on joint configuration and what you're welding. With that said, hopefully you learned something. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to leave them. Thanks for sticking around.